Dubai is a metropolis of superlatives. Rapid city development combined with pride and tradition. Historical landmarks categorize the image of Dubai, as does the most expensive hotel in the world. A city transformed from the desert into the skies boasting sparkling skyscrapers and dazzling mosques. People from all over the world live peacefully together here. The native Emiratis are in the minority. Islam is openly practiced. The historical part of Dubai is small, but very present among the urban landscape. Take the famous creek. This historic river winds its way through the city like an old lifeline. Dubai is part of the United Arab Emirates. 2.2 million people live in the metropolis and more arrive each year. Over 80% of the population come from different countries in order to find work and fulfill their dreams. No other city in the world has developed as quickly as Dubai. The rapid rise began with the discovery of oil in the 1960s. The ruling sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum still invests billions into infrastructure and urban development. A symbiosis between cutting edge architecture and old tradition. The Dow boats. Traditional wooden boats still serve as a means of transport for trade today and have a tradition that stretches back centuries. <laughs> Majib Al Falazi was born and raised in Dubai. His ancestors built Dao boats. When his father died, Majib naturally took over the business. The wood is imported from Africa. Majib's company build the boats from scratch, ready for export. His father began to build Dow boats as early as the 1950s. He has learned the technique from him. It is all manual labor and construction takes almost two years. Majib is a successful businessman who still lends a hand. He knows that quality is key when trading a traditional product. Even though money plays an essential role for the Emiratis in Dubai, these heritage items are no less important to them. واللي يحب يتعلم الصنعة نحن حاضرين نعلمهم وهذا تراث أصيل إماراتي ومحافظين عليه وما ودنا نتركه ومن دام أننا باقين نحن ماسكينه متمسكين فيه متمسكين فيه يعني بيدينا بريولنا وبقلبنا حفاظا على التراث ما بلنا نحن الوطن وللشعب it is hard to believe, but there is no written technical plan for building a boat. Everything is based on experience, sound judgment, and a picture in one's head. It is precise work with no master schematics. The boat is put together piece by piece, just like a jigsaw puzzle. The employees mainly come from India and Pakistan. In the Emirates, they can earn much more than in their home countries. Through chain hoist technique, the planks of wood are pulled together as closely as possible. 
Wood is a natural material that can bend and change shape. As long as the gaps between the planks are minimal, the boat can be left in the water and the floating wood is brought together by the pressure. This way the boat becomes an impenetrable unit. Not a single nail is used to build a dow boat. The design of these boats is unique. This is stronger. Cars, rice, sugar, and even steel are transported on Dow boats. Even in the 21st century, this old technique has its place in global business. نحط الفرام طبعا اول شيء في تصنيع السفينه على حسب العرف والتقاليد اللي تعلمناها نحن Majib will work here until his son can take over the business likewise he will transfer it to his son who will then pass it on to his own son an emirati would never give up a family tradition Countless traditional Dow boats are in the port in the creek. Many goods are shipped from the port in Dubai to other countries, such as Qatar or Iraq. In turn, the port is popular as a hub for bringing products to the Emirates from India or China. Dubai is a free trade area. Many international businesses invest in the Arabic metropolis. The creek is the most famous river that flows through Dubai. In contrast with most waterways in the city, it emerged naturally as an estuary of the Persian Gulf. It is 14 kilometers long and divides Deira and Bur Dubai, the oldest districts of the metropolis. In the 1970s, the riverbed was made deeper so that the creek could be used by larger merchant vessels. Even today, people commute from one side of the river to the other by using abras, small wooden boats. Tushal Tadeshwa also travels from one side to the other every day. No traffic jams and no mad rush. Tushal comes from an Indian migrant family and was born in Dubai. He works in the old district of Deira. People who pass by the historical houses get an idea of how Dubai once looked. There is always hustle and bustle on the creek. Tushal's family is also very accustomed to the old river. Many years ago, my father used to travel from the creek, uh, from the other side of the city to this side, like from Bartupa to Deira. And uh, even my grandparents, whenever they come, they used to go from, they used to travel through the boat, by the boat. And, uh, even many business people who used to uh, bring gold over here, jewelries in the market, they used to transport their gold and jewelries by the boat. Gold and jewelry play a key role in Deira. The most important souk of the United Arab Emirates is in this district. Tushal also works there. 
The Gold Souk Market is one of the main attractions of the metropolis, not only for tourists, but also for native Emiratis. Dubai, the city of gold. The Gold Souk of Dubai is the largest in the world. The first traders from India came into the city as far back as the 1940s. To date, 80% of the gold business is Indian owned. Many small workshops are in the immediate vicinity. The family business, owned by Tushal's father, is located here. When he came to Dubai from India many decades ago in order to try his luck, the business was still in its infancy. Then the company flourished. My grandfather and my father learned in the gold business. So I want to learn my son also the gold jewelry business. Tushal studied economics in Dubai. It wasn't always his intention to join his father's business, but eventually he came around to the idea and learned the manual work from scratch. Today, he is fascinated by the liquid gold from which the valuable bars are ultimately formed. Jewelry plays a large role in the Oriental world. Arabic customers prefer traditional design. Minimalism is not on trend. The Emiratis are rather more extravagant and necklaces are especially popular. The whole process takes place in the workshop from smelting to molding, right up to design and final manufacture. Only gold obtains its special shine from the grinding process. Tushal oversees quality control at the end. Now these are the handmade jewelries, and right now for these necklaces they have a very high demand. Mostly local customers over here the Emiratis, they come and buy these and they use these one also for marriage purposes because it looks very fancy now. It attracts everyone, it, att it grabs attention from people. It is a well-guarded secret but unofficially assumed that around 10 tons of gold are sold here. Over 300 businesses buy their jewellery in the souk. Tushal brings the glossy supplies into the business on foot every day. Supplies are needed here because business is booming. In times of uncertainty, gold has become one of the best currencies. Tushal and his father deliver thousands of individual pieces each year to the largest jewellery business of the gold souk. Even though the vast offering of the market can intimidate visitors, all businesses can seemingly live well from the sales. Everyone loves gold here. The local Emiratis, they love gold um, whenever they have uh, a wedding or any um, function, traditional functions, events. They like to wear jewelry, they like to show it off, they like to show people that they have gold and they, they want to wear it. Gold uh, definitely it represents wealth and also a lot of people nowadays they buy gold because they see it as an investment. For Tushal, it is always a special moment when jewelry is presented. 
I completely feel proud when uh, I see the customers buying our jewelries and when they describe how beautiful uh, our jewelry is. For example, the necklace which I just gave, no? it has a high, very high demand. And when the customer describes how beautiful it is, you feel very proud of yourself. Just a few moments later, the customers are offered new jewelry. Not far away from the souk, you can see the oldest part of Dubai, Fort Al Fahidi, the historic city center. Here, tourists see how today's metropolis used to look in the 18th century. It is an accumulation of houses in the middle of the desert. The striking outer walls served as protection against the strong winds. Today, Al Fahidi is a sort of memorial of Dubai's past. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid preserves the district as part of its cultural heritage. Dubai is still spilling over into the desert. Apart from residential buildings, universities have also been built in the outlying districts. They all have large car parks to accommodate the students who drive. Fatme Saeed is 20 years old and is studying graphics and painting. She comes from an Emirati family and was at an American high school in Dubai. <laughs> والحصاد فينا فأنا قررت إني أدرس عشان أول شيء أعطي دولتي أرد لها العطاء اللي هي عطتني إياه وثاني شيء إني أبني حق عمري مستقبل زين. The state university is free of charge for students. Male and female students are educated separately. Studies are in line with international standards and all lectures are in English. How does my future look? How is my country progressing? These are some of the questions portrayed in the work of the Dubai art students. There is only one topic that is still handled with sensitivity, the Muslim faith. We are free to express ourselves in whatever way we want, but we have to stick to the certain guidelines that, uh, that are like, don't cross stuff that are relating to religion or so. But in general, we are free to express ourselves the way we want to express ourselves. No. The female Arabic students are ambitious and target-driven. Success as a way of life is self-evident among the young generation. My main goal is to open my own advertisement company and start building on that and building a big one, not just a small company, and expanding and being an international company, not just a local company. Women in Dubai can undertake any profession, and some do take up management positions. Entering a profession in Dubai for local women isn't hard at all, like it's so easy. In fact, uh, the country is providing us with all the facilities we need for an easy access to any profession we like. Fatme prefers to spend her free time focusing on art. Al Sirkal Avenue is the hotspot for contemporary art a former factory site that was converted into a large, fashionable gallery complex in the last few years. Contemporary art has been present in Dubai for a long time. It is attracting growing interest as an investment and a sign of social status.
Fatmay also regularly visits numerous international galleries with her friends. الفن المعاصر في الدولة يعطي طابع مختلف عن الفن الإسلامي اللي تعودنا عليه من من إحنا صغار. We grew up on Islamic art and Islamic culture, so we've been used to it. However, now modern art يعطي طابع مختلف يعطي طابع الغرب على ال على الشر طابع ال الفنون المعاصرة على الفنون القديمة. Al Circle Avenue bears witness to the constant transformation of Dubai and the interests of global developments. Contemporary art is a booming industry today. More and more international gallery owners are opening new branches in the Arabian metropolis. Hisham Samawi was the first art dealer to see potential in Dubai and endeavor to make something of the region. He was born in Syria and grew up in Europe and the USA. The gallery owner recognized the quality of Arabic contemporary art at an early stage. Everything started before 10 years here, but there was a lot of art before. There was a lot of art in the country and that, but before 10 years, there was a lot of people who came from outside and saw that there was no one in this country. الجاليريات مثل تلاقي بأمريكا وبأوروبا وجابوا هاي البزنس موديل تبع الويسترن جاليريز ولاقوا الفنانين وشافوا انه في في اشي كتير كتير موين كتير سبيشل باللغة تبعهم ولازم يساعدون يكونوا اشي اكبر The IAM Gallery is particularly busy these days Art Dubai, the largest art exhibition in the Arabic region, is opening with only a short time to go before the opening reception, Hisham is choosing the works he would like to take, such as those by Syrian artist Mahanad Arabi. He tells the artists that he has always painted portraits of women, and because he has felt safe since leaving his hometown of Damascus, the women portrayed have had an open and positive facial expression again. فهيك يمكن شيء من الجو الواحد بيعيشه كيف هاي الكاركتر تبعي كيف عم تطلعه وبنفس الوقت شيء من جو المكان اللي هو العلاقه بالسماء بالعاده كان كل الباك جراوند بتكون فلات آه فهلا غير انا عرفت فيها شوي تكستشر ايه كيف احيانا انت تقدم لوحه تكون ممتعه بصريا وبنفس الوقت يكون فيها فيها رساله يعني فيها هم فيها عمق مو بس لوحة هيك تكون الألوان من سجمة مع بعضها وبس بالنسبة كمان للمقتنين بلش يكون عندهم اهتمام من نوع تاني بلش تتطور هاي الزائقة بلش يحسوا بقيمة العمل مو بس انه عمل حلو او ما انه حلو ولأنه دخل بعدة مناحي One of the most expensive streets along the coast is the Jumeirah Beach Road. At the end is Burj Al Arab and Madinat Jumeirah. The business and leisure center is part of one of the most luxurious sites in Dubai. Art Dubai opened for the first time in this space 10 years ago. Today, it is the meeting point for the upper-class art lovers of the Arab world. It is also a magnet for an international audience. Under the auspices of the Sheikh, over 90 galleries from 43 countries are exhibiting their artists. As with other exhibitions, the opening is a big event. It is about seeing and being seen, but it is also about buying. Modern art simply belongs to modern villa furnishings these days.
Hisham was there from the beginning. One of his customers is Sultan Al Qasemi, an influential collector from Dubai. لاحظت دبي أهمية الفن فقامت الحكومة بدعم هذا المشهد الجديد بسبب أهميته فأتوقع بأن الفن سيزداد أهمية في العقد القادم تذكروا بأننا الآن ما زلنا في أول عقد من الفن في دبي The art fair in Dubai has long been established as an important aspect of the economy. In the process, it has not shied away from provocative art. In old Dubai, there are no glossy facades or skyscrapers to be seen. The first normal residential buildings in the city were built in Deira. Many workers and immigrants live there today. The fish market opens early at 6 a.m. Every morning, buyers and dealers haggle over the best price for local fish. The selection is huge, and there are almost any types of fish available here. In the middle of it all is Christopher Graham. The Briton works in Dubai as a chef and has been living in the Middle East for over 15 years or hanging around for a while, as he describes it. 45. If I buy 30 kilo, how much? Oh, the 42. Christopher is very familiar with the tricks of the trade. He who does not negotiate is an amateur. They're negotiating quite aggressively um, and they really don't like to let you slip through when you're a customer but it's part of the part of the culture in the region being from old trade routes. Um, yeah, everybody, they like a sale, they like a bargain as well. The way they do business here is never take the first price. Uh, for example, uh, I was speaking to a gentleman just a minute ago about fish and within the space of two minutes of conversation, the price went from 70 dirhams for a kilo down to 35 dirhams for a kilo, depending on how enthusiastic I was about leaving. So whenever you want to leave, they, uh, the price suddenly gets lower and lower. So if you want a low price, probably pretend that you don't want to be there. Finally, everyone gets what they want a good fish. When driving in Dubai, the most famous landmark keeps appearing on the horizon, the highest tower in the world. On one of the main streets, Al Zaid Road, downtown Dubai draws closer this is the business center of the city. Within the space of a few decades, it has emerged from the desert at a dizzying pace to become a globalized, pulsating metropolis. People from all over the world live in Dubai. Most come here to earn as much money as possible. It is a low-tax economy but the costs of living have increased massively in recent years. The metropolis has succeeded in making its landmarks famous all over the world. The Burj Khalifa was opened in 2010. It is 828 meters tall and has 189 floors. For around 1 billion euro, the American architect Adrian Smith fulfilled the Sheikh's wish of building the highest tower in the world. The view over the city of Dubai is phenomenal. Having a meal here literally feels like being in the clouds. The restaurant, situated on the 122nd floor, is actually quite reasonably priced. 
It is not pretentious. Christopher has been working here for six months. He has already got to know some luxury kitchens in Dubai, but cooking here is and remains a unique experience. For so, Ajit. Here, 15 different nationalities work together in a tight space. However, the challenge lies elsewhere. I think the main challenge that we have would be uh, the logistics of working on the 122nd floor at 442 meters high. Um, we have to make sure that we always have all of our ingredients up. If we have to run downstairs in the middle of service, sometimes it can take half an hour to 45 minutes just to get down because there's a lot of other people traveling in the building and they want to stop on every floor. Everyone in Dubai lives in exceptional luxury. A new restaurant opens for a demanding public nearly every week. Working here successfully means adapting to this life. Right, call me when the salmon's ready. In Dubai, there's fierce competitiveness within all of the luxury brands and all of the businesses because everybody wants to be one step above the rest. You know, there's always who's got the biggest, most expensive or grandest, I don't know, burger or most expensive menu or, you know, who's got gold-plated seats or something. So, yeah, there's always competition with that as well. Lunch is especially popular with regular clientele. I think Dubai in general is always about being the biggest, the best, the fastest, the greatest. So I think the, this building itself is really iconic in terms of the fact that it represents that, that we're always pushing boundaries. Even when it is dark, the Burj Khalifa glistens and gleams high up. Dubai develops its very own charm at night. The city beams into the sky like a box of surprises. With its artificially created waterways, Dubai Marina is captivating with its magic effect and nightly serenity. You barely have to leave the center before arriving at where it all began, the desert. It passes through the entire United Arab Emirates. The endless expanse of the desert is also where Hanan Saad prefers to be. Hanan originally comes from Sudan. She grew up with camels. Since the discovery of oil and the growth of tourism, many Bedouins no longer live in the United Arab Emirates. The desert animals have had to keep moving elsewhere in accordance with their nature. It is a bit like taking a dog for a walk. Hanan has lived in Dubai for many years, but has always felt more at home in the desert. No animal is as resistant as a camel. A camel can go up to three weeks without water. The Bedouins would never have been able to lead their nomadic lives without these animals. One of many camel farms in the Emirates is situated in the middle of the desert. The desert animals still play an important role in the Arab world. Camel breeding is a great tradition, 
The Emiratis love camel racing and invest a lot into their breeding. To this day, camels are a symbol of their own culture. Jamal بتعني كثير لسكان المناطق الصحراوية والهنا في الجزيرة العربية وفي في في دولة الإمارات. طبعا هو الحيوان ال 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 الوحيد العايش معهم في الصحراء من من قديم الزمان وبيستعملوه في أشياء كثيرة لح في حياتهم اليومية. Hanan also has a professional connection to the camels. She needs their milk. لبن الإبل شوية فيه ملوحة وبتحس بالطعم ال 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 المواد المعدنية فيه في في اختلاف في 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 اختلاف الله يحب بعدين هو فيه ما فيه اللي هو الدهنيات اللي فيه أقل من حليب البقر فدي برضه الواحد بي 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 يعني بضغط الطعم بتاعه بزوقه Hanan could never have dreamt that she would one day work close to the desert in Dubai. The Sudanese have moved on from a modern version of nomadic life. She moved from Africa to Hungary, where she studied, got to know her German husband, and started a family with him in Cologne. The joint idea of producing camel's milk chocolate arose when her husband was working as a manager at a chocolate factory. Like many other expats, they ended up in Dubai, thanks to a mix of coincidence and business opportunity. Camel milk powder is the basis for chocolate. The powder is mixed together with cocoa, honey, sugar, milk and vanilla and milled for three hours. After that, the liquid chocolate will be placed into molds. The idea of the camel shape was obvious and can easily be identified with, especially in the Arab world. أنا شخصياً الشوكولاتة حليب الإبل ب ب ب بتعني لي أشياء كثيرة. أول حاجة دع المجال اللي أنا كنت بشتغل فيه من قبل. وحالياً بالشغل في شركة بتعمل شوكولاتة من حليب الإبل وأنا من بلد فيها كميات كبيرة من الإبل وحليب الإبل فبالتالي كوني هسع أنا الآن شغالة في شركة بتعمل شوكولاتة من حليب الإبل فأنا فخورة خالص بهذا وبحب خالص إني أكل الشوكولاتة لأنها من ناحية غذائية مفيدة ومن الطعم ومن الكوال ومن ال 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 الغيم بتاعتها Chocolate is not only popular in the Arab world. Hanan also exports her shiny camels to Europe. Dubai is an investment metropolis. People from all over the world come here with their business ideas. Everyone wants to sample the glamour of this metropolis. Dubai represents success and wealth. The splendid shopping malls are leisure paradises, extravagant showpieces for pleasure. Dubai means luxury. 
whether it is the most expensive hotel in the world or the famous artificial paradise of the Palm Islands. Dubai is a destination for people who appreciate excessive luxury. Meanwhile, tourism is one of the most important sources of income for the city. Five-star hotels are standard here, and for young people who want to work in the hotel trade, the Arab metropolis is a mecca. Nikki Alexiadou comes from Greece. She has rapidly built a career for herself in the Emirates. She is already the manager of VIP guest service at a five-star luxury hotel. The main income of Dubai is tourism. It is being promoted uh, by its government as well as a top leading uh, destination when it comes to travel and uh, luxury. Wedding guests are expected today and Nikki has to prepare a suite. The next Smith and his wife are coming to celebrate the honeymoon, so I want to prepare some nice flowers for the suite. What do you suggest? Uh, we have uh, different kind of bouquets uh, here. Something our... that, uh, you know, it's for, uh, for romantic, for the, for the honeymoon. Of course, for the honeymoon, I would uh, suggest the bouquet with the red roses. Perfection is expected. Young employees learn quickly in an environment of unscrupulous professionalism. Every single hotelier that has a passion for it, I believe, should pass by Dubai. Uh, you learn a lot. It's the mecca of, of hospitality of hotels. Uh, the way of customer service uh, is uh, very different, more focused. Uh, we all uh, run uh, the business in a, in a family way, and um, you cannot do it if you don't have a passion for it. Anyone who stays at a luxury hotel in Dubai knows what they are being offered. A troop of inconspicuous employees takes care of the guests. The suite that Nikki has personally prepared for the arrival of the honeymooners is ready. The only challenge that I would see as a European woman here is to, to be aware and to um, improve my knowledge around the culture. Uh, it's, it's a different culture that we're not very familiar in Europe, uh, but I have to tell you that I only felt welcome, uh, respected. Uh, they treat women uh, amazingly well. They, they consider my opinion in, uh, in everything. We have conversation. It's not a monologue, it's a dialogue, and uh, actually they have a great sense of humor. There is a strictly regulated procedure for the arrival of important guests. Nikki must discuss it with protocol manager Naim Juma. Nothing is left to chance in Dubai when it comes to tourism. التطور العمراني الضخم في إمارة دبي والتطور الاقتصادي في دولة الإمارات السياحة تعتبر من أحد أركان الاقتصاد من ناحية كذلك الدخل لإمارة دبي ولدولة الإمارات You can find tranquility here should you go looking for it. However, Dubai is a city that never stands still. Traffic and infrastructure are evolving at a rapid rate. Drone taxis are already being planned for the future in the metropolis. The government gives great importance to new technology. This includes sustainability and the protection of nature. In the middle of the city, wedged between the highway and the edge of the desert, lies Ras Al Khor Nature Reserve. With 620 hectares, it is one of the largest nature reserves in the United Arab Emirates. The biggest attraction here are the flamingos that come to hibernate.
Dubai also offers plenty of variety in the evening. New leisure parks are being built all the time. One of them is Global Village. A very special event takes place there every year. The large square is used for public festivals. Emiratis and their families make their way from all over the city to a sporting competition unknown to people in the Western world. The Yaula Championship. Yaula is a dance, but only men take part in this. The young Pakistani woman, Heba Khan, is also attending. She injured her ankle a week ago, but staying at home on such an evening is out of the question. The 24-year-old works as a reporter for Dubai's biggest sports magazine. So when I first came in here, I was the second female in the entire arena, and what I'm doing is not just something ordinary. You know, I'm doing something that's that, that not many that you don't see many women doing. So it's kind of like, it makes me feel really empowered and strong, so... <laughs> uh, so just, uh, how do you feel about the whole championship? Like, you've been trying for a very long time and now he's in the finals? Yes. So, how does he feel about this? What do you feel about it? I mean, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be Before the contest, Heba briefly interviews the favorite with the aid of an interpreter. There is not much time. However, the young woman successfully asks him a couple of questions about his chances and hopes. In Dubai, events like these take place in luxury. The Emirati love a great performance. In the beginning, I was a bit like, you know, scared to approach people and interview them. But then once you get used to it, you just go ahead with it and you just do it. So yeah, and right now I just feel like I'm in my element, I'm in my zone. The big event is broadcast live on TV. Arabian yaula dancing is much loved by the natives, who are well known for being crazy about sport. Even the son of the ruling sheikh has come to the arena today. This is an extraordinary experience for the Emiratis. Yaula dancing is based on a nomadic tradition. When Heba reported on it for the first time, she had never heard of it. Yola itself is a very male-dominated sport. They don't even have like female yola uh, the performers because it's just not the it's just not something that's done. It's, it's just something that it's a man's sport. That's what it is. Yaula dancing celebrates the nomadic lives of men. Rifles and sticks were previously used by Bedouins to control their camels. The dance is also a symbol of the pride that Arabian men take in their abilities as hunters and fighters. The dancing girls in the background do not have any special significance. They simply move their hair in the most unusual way on stage. The journalist goes about her job professionally. After the victory ceremony, Heba has her story ready to post on the web.
this is the end of a long working day for her. The visitors round off the evening in the grounds of the leisure park. Dubai is a city that rarely sleeps, always on the move and always in search of the next major event. <laughs>